Hello everyone and welcome to the quarterfinals of this year's FIDE World Cup. It is Gukesh versus Magnus Carlsen. This is the first decisive game that finished and uh, Gukesh defeated uh, Van Gaal in the previous round. Magnus Carlsen defeated Vasily Vanchuk. It was um, a great match for both of them. Uh, but now they face each other and of course the goal is uh, enter the semi-finals. So I'm not going to spoil anything. Let's check it out. It's quite a beautiful game. Uh, Gukesh has the white pieces and he opens with pawn to d4. Magnus opts for knight to f6 and here we have bishop to f4. For, uh, opting for the London system, uh, which uh, is something Magnus definitely hasn't planned because here he was, uh, well, he was sort of surprised and he did take his time uh, deciding on his next move. And there are many moves you can play here. You can go for g6, you can go for d5, you can go for c6, you can go for c5, you can go for e6, but Magnus goes for none of that. Uh, he actually plays pawn to b6, which is like the eighth most popular, maybe in the tenth most popular uh, continuation. And it hasn't really been employed on the top level. And uh, MVL, uh, Maxim Vashiola used it a couple of times. I think he used it three times in the Norway chess blitz in 2017, and he lost all three games. So the, uh, the, uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the move order knight of six followed by b6 that does not have a great reputation against d4 bishop to f4 but okay magnus thought that this would uh, avoid gukesh preparation and uh well it, it wasn't exactly so so because gukesh played very very quickly here uh he continued with knight to c3 uh we have bishop to b7 and now pawn to f3 so basically now you see that this game will be all about the fight for the e4 square uh we have e6 and pawn to e4 gukesh grabs the full center here and there are some games where d5 and bishop to b4 were played, uh, but Magnus goes for a6, and it is now already as of move 5 that we have a completely new game. Imagine that, uh, move 5 in a classical time format in a, in a tournament of this uh, importance, uh, a completely new game. Uh, so, okay, queen to d2, Gukesh prepares the castle queen side, and pawn to d5, again, going uh, for the e4 square. We have castles, and now bishop to b4. Uh, well, pinning one of the defenders of the e4 pawn, we have a3, bishop captures, queen captures, and now d captures on e4. And now the question is, what uh, was Gukesh's plan? Is his plan to capture on c7? Is that is that the idea, or is the idea something else? Well, let's see what happens if you play bishop captures on c7, uh, or queen queen captures it's a it's a fine maneuver but then queen to d5 now you have to worry about stuff like queen to a2 so you're gonna play bishop to c4 of course uh queen to g5 with check king to b1 and now you can continue attacking with b5 let's say let's say pawn to d5 now uh, white can even sacrifice some material here b captures and queen to b4 now you are preventing the black king from castling but also how is um, a black saving that bishop on b7 there's really no good way to do it if you move it you can just capture on b8 so uh, we might as well capture something bishop captures on d5 now we're gonna win a tempo by attacking the black queen give a few pawns Queen captures on g2, knight to f4, attack the queen again, queen captures on f3, attack the queen again, and once the queen moves, now we're going to play bishop captures on b8, and you have this very, very active position where, uh, okay, black is up a piece, but also black's king cannot leave the center of the board, uh, so it's definitely a trade-off, if anyone is to be preferred here, it, it is definitely white, uh, but uh, of course the line is not forced, uh, and... Um, uh, well, it's just a uh, j just a fun way to play. So Gukesh instead goes pawn to d5, and now we have knight captures on d5, queen captures on g7, going after the rook here. Magnus offers a queen trade, and Gukesh accepts queen captures, knight captures. And here, when I saw this, I thought, uh, okay, a, a very quick uh, queen uh, trade like uh, Magnus did against uh, Vincent Keimer, and then he just lost terribly in round one. Is are we going to see a repetition of that? Uh, well, let's see. Bishop to e5 forces king to e7. Uh, there is uh, no way to actually defend the knight any other way. And only now bishop captures on c7, winning back the material. We have knight b to d7, and now bishop back to g3. We have rook h to g8. Here Magnus started playing a little bit quicker. Uh, and bishop to e2, continuing development. You don't want um, uh, to play something like knight to d2 and then, uh, well... Uh, allow something like e captures on f3 so king back to e8 and now f captures on e4 we have knight captures and bishop to f3 and here magnus just trades everything off knight captures on g3 and now gukash can uh, capture on h3 but he can also capture on b7 uh, he captured on g3 but uh, just to show you what happens if bishop captures on b7 attacks the rook so you're going to attack the bishop but now h captures on g3 Rook captures on b7, rook captures on h7, and rook captures on g3. So equal 
available material. Uh, if anyone is to be preferred here, it's probably black. Uh, but uh, again, not much to not much to show for here. He does have he he's the only one with the past pawn. So we should prefer black a little bit here. But instead, after knight captures on g3, h captures on g3, we have bishop captures on f3, uh, and now knight captures on f3. And now we have rook captures on g3. Uh, if you try to play active with knight to f6, then you get something like rook to h6, attacks the knight, and once the king defends it, now knight to e5. And you get this position where black is really uh, out of any good options. You can't move the knight because of rook to d7 check. You can't move the rook uh, uh, to d8 because of knight to c6 check picking up the rook so you you have to go into this forced line of knight to g4 and then let's say knight to c6 check king to e8 rook captures on h7 now knight to uh, uh rook captures on h7 and that's pretty much it then you get the rook into the game uh white is up a pawn it's a double g pawn so it's not spectacular but black would get some activity for this sacrificed pawn uh but okay instead we have rook to, uh rook captures on g3 by magnus and now rook captures on h7 king to e7 and now knight to d4 and here uh, we have knight to e5 uh, the reason why Magnus didn't go for rook captures on g2 is that uh, if you go for this, then knight to c6 check, king to e8, and now rook to f1. We'll put pressure on this f pawn, and now you can defend it, okay? You're going to play something like rook to c8, put pressure on the knight, but now it's a dead draw. Uh, we just trade everything off, rook f captures on f7, you're going to play rook captures on c6, rook, rook will, okay, you can first deliver a check, king to f8, rook captures on d7, you're going to capture on c2 here, and after king to d1, uh, it's a very rare a uh, case where you have uh, the the two rooks on the second of your opponent's color and the two rooks on the uh, on the seventh rank uh, and it's just a draw, of course, unless one of them blunders mate, like something like this, but of course that's not going to happen, so we're going to have a draw by perpetual checking here. Uh, so after knight to d4, Magnus decides to go for knight to e5 instead, he says, I don't want to finish this game too early, uh, rook to e1 attacking the knight, and now Magnus plays rook to g4, and here Magnus caught up on time a little bit, uh, it's 30 minutes for Gukesh versus 36 minutes, uh, minutes uh, for Magnus, because Magnus was um, uh, doing very poorly in the opening he did have to figure out how to counter that london system properly but now he definitely caught up and gukash decides to trade knights we have captures captures and rook back to e2 defending the pawn here magnus quickly goes rook a to d8 this is a move you play without thinking because if white is careless of course rook to d1 is checkmate so Gukesh has to tend to that. Uh, of course, he plays c3. He gives he gives his king the c2 square to escape to. And now rook to f4. Uh, defending the pawn here. Of course, you don't want Gukesh to just attack that pawn for free. King to c2 and now rook to g8. Going after the g2 pawn. Pawn to b4 by Gukesh creating a safe haven for his king on b3. And now pawn to b5. We have king to b3 and of course rook f to g4. Now doubling up on the g file. Uh, rook to f2 going after the f7 pawn. And now Magnus just defends it with his a uh, rook from g8 and offers a trade of rooks. Uh, so rook captures on g7. Rook captures on g7. And now pawn to a4. And here Magnus plays pawn to f5. So uh, how do you evaluate this position? Well, Gukesh uh, is 3 against 2 on the queen side. If he trades all of them, then he gets a pass pawn. And Magnus already has a pass pawn in the center of the board. So a captures on b5. A captures on b5. And now uh, rook to a2. The biggest problem for Gukesh is that he cannot play c4. Because the rook to g3 checking has to move. And then you uh, lose the c4 pawn. So Gukesh has to figure out how to actually advance that pawn to c4. If he can figure that out, uh, he might uh, survive this. Because make no mistake, it's uh, it's Magnus who will be playing for the win here. He does have the passed e pawn. Gukesh has the permanent weakness on g2. And also the c3 is a backwards pawn. So seemingly out of nowhere, just trading pieces, playing good moves, Gukesh is in a very, very difficult situation. Uh, rook to a2, Gukesh wants to go uh, for rook to a5 and go after the pawn here. And Magnus could... Uh, uh, Magnus could actually uh, win the game on the spot here, but uh, he, he doesn't find it. Uh, but, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's just a, a disgusting engine line. King to d6 and after king to, uh, rook to a5, king to c6. And now there's really no move for white here. Well, you, you have to move the rook, rook to a2 and now pawn to f4. And white is out of moves here. Now Magnus found this exact same thing only through a different move order, but in doing so, he allowed Gukash the possibility of a very, very artistic defense. 
uh, but only if he finds it. And um, here, Gukas did not find it. He played rook to a7 check. Uh, but do you know what the what the line is that um, uh, well uh, that, that saves the game for Gukas? Even feel free to pause the video and try to spot this line for Gukas uh, while I give you a couple of seconds, or you know, ju just the move. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on being a true defender of, uh, uh, well, uh, barely defensible positions. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to a5. Again, this is the only move that um, defends because, uh, well, okay, f4, you defend the pawn. And now the trick is to give up the g2 pawn. You don't go back. Of course, you play king to c2. So unless you have like a lot of time on the clock, you don't find this. And Gukash was already closing in on five minutes on the clock. Point is that after rook captures on g2 check, King to d3, rook to g5, now you play king to e4, rook to f5 defending the pawn, and now rook to a7 check. King f6, now king to f3, and once e5 is played, you play rook a6 check. King to g5, and now rook to e6, and this is how you defend the position. Uh, you don't, uh, uh, you, you have control over the e4 square, and uh, your one pawn is uh, stopping both the b and the c pawn uh, from advancing forward. So this is what Gukas has to find in order to save the position, but he played rook to a7 check and now he gives Magnus that one crucial tempo in this race where he will just be well one, one square uh, closer to, to actually winning the game and also Gukish is now down to five minutes on the clock Magnus has some 30 minutes on the clock over 30 minutes rook back to a2 defending but now Magnus is just free to push his pawns f4 rook to c2 and now rook to g3 we have king to a2 uh, Gukish hoping to get that c4 move in uh, but now king to e5 now c4 will not not be uh, such a problem okay we can even show what happens b captures b5 now king d5 and now after b6 of course you don't go after the pawn and allow rook to b2 you have to play rook to b3 that's how you play it and now of course after rook to b2 it's not a problem we can just trade captures captures and go after the pawn and now with three pawns to one we will easily win this game with black so king to b2 again, Gukesh repeats, and now uh, we have king to d5, rook to d2 with check, and king to e4. And here, uh, time control has been reached by both of them. This is move 40. Gukesh actually left the board, and he uh, wasn't coming back for, for quite some time. I think he was away for like 20 minutes checking out the other games. I actually thought he was going to pull a Bartleben, uh, but uh, he didn't. He came back, and he played the king to b3. Uh, we have pawn to e5, and now rook to e2 check. King to f5 we have rook to d2 and now pawn to e4 you can see how strong the past e pawn is rook to d5 check king to f6 and okay there's nothing better R gukash captures the pawn he does have two connected pass pawns now but magnus's pawns are too far away now the problem is if rook to b8 then e2 and if rook to e8 then rook to e3 stops the rook and next move you get a queen into the game so rook to b6 check was played we have king to f5 and now rook to b5 with check uh, it's kind of a you know a trait of every chess player to you know give those last few checks before actually resigning i don't know why we do this it's uh Probably because, you know, there's this possibility of maybe your opponent makes a really, really silly move or, or maybe it's just, you know, coming to terms with... Uh... Uh, with the inevitable doom so it's hard to say king to e4 we have rook to b8 magnus played e2 and he was in this position on move 48 that uh, gukesh resigned the, the game as there is nothing more to be done here so both of them uh pretty much destroyed all of their uh opponents in classical chess only one of their uh games went to uh the time breaks magnus uh uh to, took vincent to tie breaks and uh, Gukesh played tie breaks against uh, Yesipenko, I believe uh, all the other games ended uh, in classical chess and so does this one uh, also uh, in classical chess. Now tomorrow Gukesh will have the, the, the black pieces and he will have to defeat Magnus with black which, uh, well, it's not impossible but chances uh, are, you know, de definitely against him but if, you know, if he wants to win the World Cup, if he wants to qualify for the candidates, that is exactly what he's going to have to do and that will not beat Magnus, that will just force tiebreak. So the road ahead is, is, is a great one. Uh, and here you resign uh, king to c2, for example, you want to try to stop the pawn, doesn't really matter, king to e3, you're going to play rook e8 check, king f2, and now king, e2, king d2 stops the pawn from coming to e1, uh, but now rook e3 wins in all of the lines, that's pretty much it, rook captures pawn, captures, that's it, the king has nowhere to go, you have to move now e1 queen, you have a queen, your opponent doesn't, uh, that's uh, all there is. 
Uh, so yeah, very nicely done by Magnus. Uh, it was a pretty wild game. Uh, first Gooker surprising Magnus with the London, then Magnus going for this offbeat B6 move uh, that, uh, well, uh, like I said, only only been played by Maxim Varshela Grav. He <laughs> lost three games in Rue 1. Uh, and then uh, Gukesh played pretty much uh, all, all the moves, uh, all the perfect moves. And uh, the only way to explain this loss is that he was playing against Magnus Carlsen. There is nothing else uh, to this than he was uh, double checking, triple checking and quadruple checking his moves, spending more and more time to counter Magnus's moves. Uh, he went down in time and here when he was just five minutes on the clock, um, it was already uh, far too late, to, you know. Uh, even try to defend this so he's gonna try uh, have to try something else uh, in the second game we'll see what happens uh, but yeah i uh, ho hope you guys enjoyed that like i said this is the first decisive game that finished some of the other games are very likely to finish and we're going to cover them as well uh, so do stay tuned for that uh, so yeah uh, uh, i would like to thank uh, serin was cash up e1 check nano id mario and sinosa and uh, michael shui for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of the fide world cup uh, until it finishes uh, so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day